Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has linked the Holocaust with Palestinian. Netanyahu, in a rich speech this week, claimed the idea for the final solution came from Palestinian Grand Mufti Haj Amin al Husseini, who met Adolf Hitler in Germany in 1941. Now, the comments have outraged Arabs and some Jewish leaders and scholars who say that Netanyahu is distorting history and trivialising genocide. It also comes as Israel is in the grip of a wave of violence. In a moment, we speak to a Middle East analyst. First, this report from Tom Rayner in Jerusalem. Not unusual for Benjamin Netanyahu to refer to history when making a political point about the present. Other attacks on the Jewish community in 1920, 1921, 1929 were uh, instigated by a call of the Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al Hussein. But the statement that followed has caused uproar. Hitler didn't want to uh, exterminate the Jews at the time, he wanted to expel the Jews. And Haj Amin al Hussein went to Hitler and said, If you expel them, they'll all come here. So what should I do with them? He asked. He said, Burn them. Now, President Abbas described the speech as despicable, claiming it blamed Palestinians for the Holocaust. Israeli opposition figures called it a dangerous distortion that absolved Hitler of his most heinous crime. The man Mr Netanyahu highlighted was Haj Amin al-Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem from the 1920s and an influential Arab nationalist. But leading academics, including those from the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial, say the claim he was Hitler's inspiration to exterminate rather than expel Europe's Jews is factually wrong. The Mufti indeed definitely an anti-Semite and wishing to have no Jews in the area wanted the Middle East and North Africa to be included in the final solution. But he did not foment or start or influence the final solution as a whole in any way. The comments follow a month-long wave of attacks by Palestinians that have left 10 Israelis dead. Those attacks continue today. But so have the demonstrations across the occupied Palestinian territories. At least 45 Palestinians have been killed, some after carrying out attacks, others during clashes with Israeli troops. Despite the uproar over the specific comments, the broader message in Mr Netanyahu's speech is in line with what he's been saying since the start of this latest round of violence. That is, that the attacks on Israelis are motivated not by Jewish settlements in the West Bank or Israel's continued occupation there, not even frustrations at the absence of a peace process. Instead, he points to something that predates all of those things. Indeed, predates the state of Israel. And that, he says, is long-standing anti-Semitism and the incitement of it. It's a line of argument that the Palestinians entirely reject. This is a joke. People are really laughing on this distortion of history and facts. This man is living a different world, completely denial of facts and figures and the history itself. So how could he understand today the pain, the suffering, the agony, the trauma among the youth of the Palestinians in Jerusalem? Under pressure to clarify his position ahead of this meeting with the German Chancellor in Berlin, Mr Netanyahu has said he had no intention of absolving Hitler of responsibility for the Holocaust, but insisted again that Haj Amin al-Husseini's role must not be ignored. Tom Rayner, Sky News, Jerusalem. Well, let's discuss this further now, and I'm joined by Dr Ram Porat from Monash University. So nice to have you with us. Let's take what Benjamin Netanyahu has had to say here. Hitler wanted to expel the Jews. The Grand Mufti said, burn them. Is there any historical evidence to support that? There is one uh, evidence that suggests that, one of uh, Eichmann's aides, but uh, it's been refuted by most academics. So, And, and practically speaking, uh, the, the annihilation of uh, Jews uh, under the Nazi regime started a few months earlier in uh, uh, areas occupied by for, by the mm. Germans from the former Soviet so Union. This so is this is crucial, isn't it? Because the, the the timing here is what is important. This what the accusation is that the Grand Mufti was involved in devising the final solution. The final solution, in fact, had already begun. Well, the final solution hasn't begun, but uh, the extermination of Jews has begun, and we have to understand uh, Netanyahu's comments in a uh, Israeli context now. Netanyahu is a spin master, mm. and he's used the Holocaust more than once. Uh, his most uh, uh, prominent example is, of course, Iran and uh, the denial of the Holocaust from uh, their, their, their end. But um, this is another example how he tries to uh, st use the, uh, I would say the, the train of history for his own uh, 
means, which is uh, to provide some sort of historical ex uh, explanation mm. to the environment that we now see in uh, Israel. So what he has taken here, though, is, is uh, a, an historical fact, a meeting that took place, and then sought to put that into a contemporary setting by suggesting a link directly to the Holocaust itself. But the meeting, in fact, did take place, didn't it? November 41, yes, the uh, Mufti, who wasn't a saint, he was a war criminal. He actually was uh, wanted for his um, active role supporting the Nazis in the Nuremberg trials. Mm. He was wanted. So uh, he, he actually uh, was engaged in a lot of assistance to the Nazis. But to claim that uh, uh, he uh, somehow, somehow planted the idea of the extermination of the Jews in uh, Hitler's mind is, I think, out, outstretching uh, reality or history. Um, and it's only been used for political uh, uh, means. Um, in Israel history, there, there are examples of using the Holocaust for uh, uh, the benefit of Israel. The best example is the first prime minister, uh, David Ben-Gurion's acceptance of reparations from the uh, uh, mm. then Western Germany. So it's not always negative. In this case, uh, with this overreach, he's been criticized, obviously, from the Palestinian side, but also from the Israeli side, saying this is a distortion. It effectively lets or tries to absolve Hitler for for actually devising the the Holocaust uh, and taking away some of the responsibility. Has he has he taken a step further here that has now brought him uh, into conflict with his with his own people? Well, I would suggest that no. I mean, as I said, he's a good he's a good spinner. He does know how to talk to his own audience, and these are the, uh, their captivated audience. Mm. They will not give up on his leadership even after those uh, discussions. But he's been ridiculed quite extensively in uh, uh, online uh, social media, etc., cetera, um, for his lack of, uh, of not, not the first time, a uh, lack of, of uh, standing up to the uh, historical facts. So uh, it, it doesn't add points to, the, to, to his uh, historical record, but it does does not change anything with regard to his own uh, audience. Now, of course, it needs to be also seen set against what we're seeing in the moment uh, in Israel, which is an upswing of violence. Does this also play to that right now with the potential to, to inflame what is already a, a, a very dangerous situation? I don't think it will further inflame anything. The inflammation has different reasons, reasons why it occurs from both sides. Uh, it's just another um, aspect of it, the, the um, Israeli narrative, uh, which is not new, that uh, the, the reason why the Palestinians are um, acting violently now is because of incitement. It's not new. Uh, but it, it doesn't deal with the uh, basic issues that actually started the whole uh, conflict, maybe uh, 100 or 150 years. Mm. It depends who you're asking. But, but as you say, though, given what we're seeing right now, um, raising tensions, if we look at what, what's playing out in Israel, why have we seen the upswing of violence right now? Why, obviously, the hopes of a two-state solution and trying to resume the peace talks look forlorn, but why are we seeing the action that we're seeing right now? Well, um Netanyahu actually articulated quite clearly that he's not, he's not in favor of two-state solution anymore. Mm. And the reality on the ground has been changing uh, no matter what politicians say and the, and the expansion of, of settlements. Now, uh, I'm not going to talk politics, but the reality is that uh, the Palestinians see no change in their status since the Oslo Accord actually collapsed uh, in the, uh, the late uh, 2015 years ago, only going from bad to worse. The economy is in a bad shape. Uh, they, they, they actually uh, disengaged or, or uh, divided into two separate entities now, the one in Gaza, which uh, not fondly named the Hamastan, the, the land of mm -hmm. Hamas, and the, one, and, and the Palestinian Authority. And there's, there's the ongoing threat now from, from ISIS, uh, the, the wars in the Middle East. It's, it's an island. It's not an island. It's actually a, 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 a hurricane of instability. And it was brewing for a long time. It just the timing. Uh, uh, for some reason, someone set the, the flame mm. and, and it can't be stopped uh, just in, in the flicker of a finger. Now, you've mentioned before that Benjamin Netanyahu is a master of spin and he's used history in the past for his own political ends. And 
we're, we're seeing that now with these latest comments. It comes at an interesting time, doesn't it? It comes at a time with strained relations with the United States, particularly personally between Obama and Netanyahu. It comes at a time when the United Nations has increasingly uh, recognised the Palestinian state and having observer status and a sense that there may be an increasing isolation of Israel under Netanyahu. Well, the, the, the idea of isolation is, a, again, a very prominent narrative in Israel's history for a long time. So uh, Israel, I don't think, has a lot to worry about that. Actually, uh, the Palestinian steps are seen from, from Jerusalem as sort of um, desperate steps in order to change the status quo. And uh, so there's no particular development. It's just an ongoing process that's been going on for uh, since the collapse of the Oslo Accords. Um, so there's nothing really new, just reaching a boiling point at this stage. And, and you can also see that what's happening on the ground is more uh, a proof of the inner Palestinian divide than uh, Israeli sort of uh, disagreement on policy. Uh, so uh, there's nothing really that's... Um, maybe the, the level of violence with regard to cycle of violence is now on, on a peak level. But uh, the Israeli expectation is that it will calm down at one stage or the other because it has no power to change the reality on the ground. J just a final thought from you at the start of the conversation. You mentioned that he is uh, very adept at using history to his own ends. Now, despite the fact that historically he's been challenged on the facts here, do you feel that Netanyahu would see this as a successful manoeuvre, that he has achieved his own? Possibly, yes, because... Uh, one of the aims of his pins, first of all, he's, he's, he chose the right audience, he's a uh, supportive mm -hmm. audience, the, the, uh, but, but also he, he's in the headlines, he's uh, again being painted or, or depicted uh, by what he calls the lefty media as a, for, from a negative point of view, and that actually uh, increases the cohort of supporters when he's being criticized or ridiculed. So it's a sort of um, a flip, flip, back and forth uh, sort of exercise. So he, he can, the, the most prominent example is uh, when during the last election he called, uh, he said that the Arabs, the Israeli Arabs are, are, are coming in buses mm. to vote. And, and imagine an Australian uh, Prime Minister saying, or, or candidate saying, the Aboriginals are coming in buses, you have to mm. come and vote. That would be unacceptable. But he, he later, by the way, apologized. But he, he has a, a um, sort of magic, he used to be a magic, or at least a talent, to take things that might be considered as a, a damaging and turn them on the flip side so he would uh, look uh, better even for his own consistency. Mm, yeah, fascinating development. Thank you again, Ron. A pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. Dr. Ron Porrick there from Marash University. Now it's time to take a look at the rest of the day's news, Vanessa Grimm with Nationwide.